I've been working for the past 10 weeks on Shakespeare scenes. Um, it's been an absolute delight to work with these actors. They're all really good actors, and we've had uh, a lot of fun with it. Um, so um, I think we'll go ahead and start. Um, the actors will come out and give you a little bit of a synopsis of what the scene is they're doing and, and what preceded it. Okay? You guys ready? Why do you look on me? 
I see no more than the ordinary adventure sailor. Odds my little life, I think she means a tangle in my eyes, too. No faith, proud mistress, hope not after it. Tis not your inky brows, your black silk hair, your beautiful eyeballs, nor your cheek of cream that can entangle me to your spirits. You foolish shepherd, wherefore do you follow her? Like foggy self, puffing with wind and rain, you are a thousand times a proper man than she a woman. Tis such fools as you that make the world full of ill-favored children. Romeo and Juliet, where Juliet has sent her nurse to meet Romeo to see whether or not she can get married. And the, and the clock struck nine while they sent the nurse. In half an hour, she promised to return. Perchance, she cannot meet him. Oh, that's not so. Love's hair should be thoughts which ten times swifter glides in the sun's beams, driving back shadows over lowering hills. Therefore, do the nimble opinion doves draw love, and therefore, half the winds with cupid wings. Now the sun's upon the highmost hill this day's journey. From nine to twelve is three long hours, and yet she still is not come. Has she the affections and warm youthful blood? My words would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me, but old folk, being as they were dead, unreally slow, pale, and heavy as lead. Uh, oh, has she come? Oh, she was my son, has not met with him? Send that man away. Pija, stay at the gate. Uh, oh, good honey nurse, why does that look sad? It means to be sad. Yet tell them merrily, good, thou shamest to music of sweet news by playing to me with so sour a face. I am well weary, give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache, what a jaunt have I. I would thou hadst my bones, and I thy news. Nay, I pray thee, good nurse, speak. Yea, Sue, what haste? Can you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath, and thou hast breath? To say that thou art out of breath. The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than tell that thou excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say, I did not stay a circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Is it good or bad? Well, you have made a sinful choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo? No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his legs excel all men's. And for a hand, and a foot, and a body, though they be not talked on, yet they are past compare. If not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warn him as gentle as a lamb. Go thy way, wench. Serve God. What? Have you dined at home? No, no, but of all this I did know before. What's this here our marriage? What is that? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and I warrant, a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she's with me. Where should she be? How oddly thou replies. Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady dear, oh, you're so hot. Mary, come up, all true. Is this the apologies for my aching bones? Henceforth, do your messages yourself. You're such a cool girl. Nay, I pray thee, tell me, what says my love? Have you leave to go to shore today? I have. Then hie you hence to fire lawns to set. There waits a husband to make you a wife. Now comes the wandering blood up in your cheeks, though he's scarlet, straight up, any knees. Hie you to the south. I must another way to fetch a ladder by which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. I am the dreading toil and your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon when it is dark. All to dinner, hie you to the cell. Had a high fortune, honest nurse, farewell. Cena loves her, and Viola really loves her, Cena, and Olivia doesn't, and falls in love with Viola, who is dressed as a boy. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady, a comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by method, in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one as I am is this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done. If God did all. Tis in grain, sir, twill your wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blend, whose red and white, nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive, if you will not leave the graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard upon it. I will give out divers schedules of my beauty, and every item and particle should be labeled to my will. As item, two lips in different red, two gray eyes with lids to them, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Will you send hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are 
are too proud. But if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be recompensed, though you were crowned the non peril of beauty. How does he love you? With adorations, fertile tears, oh. with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Though I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, a voice as well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in dimension and the shape of nature, a gracious person. But yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such suffering, such deadly life, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contempt love, and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Hallow your name through the reverberant hills, and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your fear of it? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him sin no more. Unless perchance you come again to tell me how he takes it. I thank you for your faith. Spend this for me. I'm no fee post, lady. Keep your purse. Tis my master, not myself, who lacks recompense. Love make his heart a flint that you shall love, and let your fervor, like my master's be, place in content. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my forces, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Not too fast. Soft, soft. Unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague? Methinks I feel this use perfection as an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let be. What ho, Malvolio? 